Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson, and today we're here to look at a 2018 Chrysler 300. This Chrysler has a problem with a hard start, a check engine lamp, and it has a code for the crank sensor. This crank sensor has already been replaced twice, so what we want to do is properly diagnose this vehicle. So to start, I want to go ahead and I want to put a scan tool on the vehicle and get some basic data. Now that we've got the scan tool connected, let's go ahead and look at some data. Now right now the engine's not running, I have it off. So the engine is cold, we have a DTC, they've been working on the cars which tells me that they've cleared these codes because I have five monitors not run. Um, that just takes a lot of my diagnostic data away but we still got to diagnose the car. So we have a code for the crank position sensor A circuit intermittent. That tells me that the computer thinks that the crankshaft sensor is failing. Now the shop has put several of crank sensors in. The last one was an OE. Now that doesn't mean that they're not bad or they are. We're going to have to figure that out. But the next thing I want to do is I want to see this hard start problem. So the shop says that this thing really has a starting issue. So let's go ahead and start it. Well it didn't start. Okay, so it was a hard start that time. Now it feels like it's running okay. I don't feel a misfire. The engine appears to run really well. It's revving. I don't have any type of a rough idle. It seems really good. Um, you would think that if the crank sensor was failing right now, I would have some kind of a drivability problem, but that may not be true. Um, so basically the scan data is telling me that I'm keeping centered. I can have fuel control. We're warming and it's we're warming slowly and that's okay for right now. Bank to bank trims are good. Um, battery is charging so all of that looks okay what I'm really concerned with is the crank sensor now if the crank sensor has some type of a failure it would definitely cause a hard start since they've already put some sensors in here it's possible that one of the cam sensors is having an issue and it will code the crank sensor I don't usually see that on this newer car but I have seen it so it's something that I always will keep in the back of my mind that a cam sensor can cause crank sensor codes and it can also give me hard starting problems. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to get a scope and I want to get into the cam sensors and the crank sensor and I want to actually see what those signals look like to try to figure out what's wrong with this car. So let's go ahead and get the scope connected. I've gone ahead and I've connected the oscilloscope to this 3.6 Chrysler engine. Channel 1 is on the CKP and that's in the side of the block on the passenger side. Channel 2 and 3 are on bank 1 on the camshafts. Uh, channel 4 and 5 are on the bank 2 camshafts. Channel 6 is on the coil and channel 7 is on the injector for the number one cylinder. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and crank this over and get this data while it's cranking to try to figure out why this engine is having a problem. So let's go ahead and get the data up on the screen and then we'll go ahead and crank this engine over. We have the scope and it's come up with all the voltage settings and that's all we're looking at is voltage so I don't need to change anything at all. I want to go ahead and I want to come to the deep record and we want to go ahead and start it. Now that we've got the data running is what I'm interested in is to crank this engine over and capture the data during the hard start condition so I can try to understand what's causing that failure. So let's go ahead and get this car started. OK, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this data now the car is started. Right here was where we started to crank the engine over. We can see that the crank starts to rotate and I had an injector fire. I come across and I had another injector fire, but in between here I did not have any coil fires. And then I fired the injector and there's not a coil fire. Now we come across here and I can see that I have a coil firing in between and we can see how these are longer in between here. It's almost like these are too close together for this to happen. Now we've got this and we can start to see the coil fire. Coil. So now we can start the car because we have fuel and spark. But over here we have something wrong. We would not deliver fuel multiple times without a spark. So this tells me I have some kind of a problem with the camera crank, the inputs. The cam and crank are the inputs that make these outputs, which is the injectors and the coils. Now realize that these injectors and coils are only on the number one cylinder, but the same thing is happening on all the other cylinders as well. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to get a little piece over here and we want to zoom in. Now I want to go ahead and I want to separate these so we can look at what's going on. Okay, so now we can see that these are our, our, this is the crank, these are the cams to bank one, these are the cams to bank two. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a slice here. So we can see this missing index, and this is an index, and this is an index, 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 and we can see it starts to spin faster over here. So what I want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to take from index to index here and just take a look at this. Okay, this is, has a problem. This opening where I pull this down and it comes up and then I have this wide piece right here and this wide piece, that shouldn't be there. So let's go back out here. There's something not right there with this. So if I come in here and we look at just this, Do you see how we have these strikes? These are the target wheels. And then we have this index. This is the missing teeth. But this wide spot right here should not be there. I should have the index and then I should have a trigger in between here. There's something wrong with that crank. So let's get more data over here. Now we can start to see where it's firing and we can see the index, index, index and we're firing everything. But there's, there's something wrong with the crank trigger wheel. See how consistent it is? So that's an opening and that's not coming and going. That's there every single time. And this is where we started, and we can still see that even when we started, we have this tooth that's missing. Okay, guys. So over here, when the processor is trying to figure out where the crank angle space is, what stroke I'm on, it's having a problem because it's not supposed to have that indexing. So what's happening here is every time I have an edge that's changing, and these are all my edges from my cam, and it's comparing these edges of the cam to these edges on the crank sensor. But when it comes up here, it's expecting another, another tooth here, and it's not there. Something's wrong, like that's something wrong. I think that's the trigger wheel because it's so steady. But when I'm counting edges, rising and falling edges, against a clock, the computer is making a model of this engine and it's comparing where this is to the model that's programmed so it can figure out what stroke, what, where the crank plane is, what piston is at top dead center when I need to fire and when I need to deliver fuel. Um, with this missing piece, it's confused so it does not start the car. We can see that right here, that's one crank revolution, two, 
Now we can see right here that we had an injector fire, but we don't have another injector fire. And then where we finally get one over here, so that's one, two, and these now are in the right location. They seem to be. And now we, well, okay, so that would be there. Then we have this fire, and then we have this. Okay, so that got the sequence now. So now we have the sequence. Once it starts to fire the coil, it's figured out where it is in crank angle space. And that's why this car continues to run fine. Once it's calculated it and it's it's even though that tooth is bad, the processor is still able to figure out where in time the engine is and then it starts to run and it will run fine. But why we're having a problem here is when we're cranking is because this crank sensor, and I don't think it's a sensor, I think that's a trigger wheel has an issue. So what I want to do What I want to do is I want to take out the crank sensor and I want to put a bore scope up in there and I want to roll the motor around because this is too consistent. This is something wrong with the trigger wheel. I don't think that that's a sensor. I think that's a trigger wheel. So let's go ahead and get that sensor out and get a bore scope and let's try to figure out what's wrong with the sensor or the trigger wheel or whatever's going on. Okay, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to get this crank sensor out of here so we can check that target wheel. We're going to go ahead and get the bore scope in the hole where the crank sensor goes. And now I want to roll the motor around and watch that trigger wheel. Okay, so I've got a wrench on the crankshaft so I can turn it. And I've gone ahead and I've got the bore scope in through the hole. And these are my teeth right here. So this is a tooth and this is a tooth. And this is where we've got a missing position. And then we'll have a missing one. And so it's a tooth, a tooth, a tooth. And what I want to do is I need to just roll this around until I can try to figure out if one of these has a problem or not. It sure looks like it is that's what was wrong by looking at the scope data. So now let's confirm the scope data. So what we're going to do is we're going to just turn this around and you can see each tooth So if we can find the big index tooth, the wide one, the bad tooth was right next to that wide index. Okay, here's the index right here. Do you see that's the wide tooth? So that'll be the wider or the indexing position. Oh wow, look, it is bent. Look at that. Do you see how that's bent right there? This is the indexing. Do you see how it's been all the way down? Oh, sure enough, that thing is bent. That's so cool. See, it? you can see it's bent down right there. And you can also see it's right after the wide indexing position tooth, because that's our wide tooth. Now we come up past the wide tooth, and right after that wide tooth, we have a missing tooth. That's what the scope showed, and now that's what the physical data shows. So, the tooth is definitely damaged and it's bent back. Maybe when they took out the sensor, they got bent. I mean, I'm not sure how you bend the tooth. 
but basically at this point the pan is going to need to come down this is going to need to be straightened so it's even and the crank position sensor can can have the magnetic field work with that tooth so it gives you a trigger okay guys this is a really cool car this car is one that has a hard start problem and we can see that the hard start is being caused by the tooth being bent down and if the tooth is bent down it can't interact with the magnetic field from the sensor so the sensor doesn't trip and that gives the computer a problem because it's counting each edge of each tooth on the falling and rising edge and it's putting it into its model to find out where the crank planes or where the stroke position is when it compares that to the camshaft the cam and crank are the two inputs that make all the outputs such as the injectors and the coils if these are wrong then the outputs will also be wrong so this is so cool because the calibration engineers that calibrated this car did a great job a lot of cars when they have a missing tooth they never really recover or they won't start this car actually could figure out where it is in crank angle space with it's just several crank revolutions and then it took control and the car could run and it ran fine after that the problem was a hard start problem caused from the tooth now the scope clearly showed that I had a problem and it had to do with the crank sensor or the trigger wheel and it looked way more like a trigger wheel because the repetitious nature of it it just looked like a trigger wheel when we got the physical data with the bore scope it absolutely confirms that that tooth was bent down now the shop will take the pan off they'll straighten the tooth and they'll get it put back together and this car is going to be ready to deliver back to the customer what I want you to really take away from this is the way we went about doing this it's an event driven diagnostic plan you do one test or you perform a test and that data then provide you to make your next decision on how that test will be performed if you run a test and you understand why you're running the test and what the data that it, you gather is telling you and then you run the next test and you get the data and you understand what it's telling you you will always come out with a very accurate quick diagnosis of the car if you perform this type of diagnosis and you have great tools you too will have good troubleshooting in your base